Hello, I'm Christine Gibson from Christ the King School in Lexington, Kentucky, and I'd like to start with a question for you. What is the greatest commandment? I hope all my good Catholic educator friends out there know the greatest commandment is to love God above all things and love your neighbor as yourself. And that second half of the equation there, to love your neighbor as yourself, is really what we um, are talking about when we're looking at social and emotional development through a Catholic lens. So as a Catholic school counselor, that's what I try to teach the children that the more we love ourselves, the better we love ourselves, the more we love those around us. And when we look at the competencies of social and emotional learning, and those competencies are put out by the Collaborative for Academic Social and Emotional Learning. And we'll look at those in just a second. I'll screen share and share with you. But as we go through, you'll, you may feel like, well, these aren't anything new, really. Catholic educators, we've been teaching this for a long time. We've been teaching children how to love themselves, and how to love those around them. So I'm gonna share this and you'll get what I'm saying. This is what we've been doing, but there's some different lingo involved. I think we're gonna talk about social and emotional learning. This is what we're talking about. The five competencies set out by CASEL, um, the Collaborative for Academic, Social and Emotional Learning. Let's start with self-management. Students are to learn to self-manage. That is impulse control. They learn stress management, self-discipline, self-motivation, goal setting, and organizational skills. They learn responsible decision-making, identifying problems, analyzing situations, solving problems, evaluating, reflecting, and ethical responsibility. Relationship skills, such as communication, social engagement, relationship building, and teamwork. Social awareness perspective taking, empathy, appreciating diversity, and respect for others. Self-awareness, identifying emotions, accurate self-perception, recognizing strengths, self-confidence, and self-efficacy. So how, what I'd like to do is show you some resources that I use to teach these. And I do it um, by taking largely secular resources and then emphasizing the underlying um, biblical principles and Catholic social teaching principles or um, principles from our catechism that are present in the lesson. So let me go back to that. I'm not gonna screen share at this moment. Here we are. So just as an example, here's a book I really love called The What Ifs. It's written by Emily Kilgore and it is such a great example of self-management underneath that domain of self-management, this particularly hits stress management. Um, and I, when I teach this particular book, great book, let me explain it to you how it works. You could teach this, I'm telling you, you could do this with adults because this little girl is overwhelmed with worry, right? And anxiety. So here she is. And these are all called the what ifs, these little creatures that are attacking her and upsetting her. And in the, because she thinks of what if all these bad things that happen that are all these bad things that could happen. Well, then someone teaches her along the way that there are good what ifs. So you could say like, those would be hopes. The bad what ifs were her worries or anxieties and the good what ifs are the hopes. Well, what if these good things happen? So we learned in this particular book, we're hitting that domain of um, self-management or stress management, which is in that, in that domain. And I also um, teach them the Bible verses that teach us from Philippians, do not be anxious about anything, but in prayer and supplication, make your request known to God and the peace that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. We learn cast all your cares on him because he cares for you in first Peter. So that's our attempt at, in elementary grades and middle school grades to talk about um, anxiety and stress and what God says about that that those are normal feelings, but um, that God hears your prayers. And when we cast our cares upon him, they're a lot lighter to carry. So just one example, the what ifs. Love that. I know some adults I'd like to share that book with. Oh, let me show you the activity we do with that book too. Again, super easy. And the ideas I'm sharing, they're for guidance counselors, but for religion teachers, reading teachers, anybody who interacts with kids and cares about their social and emotional well-being. So the kids have to write a negative what if 
Like, what if my cat dies? It could happen, right? And kids stay up at night worrying about this kind of thing. Well, you draw a line through that one because that's a negative what if. And we're going to make it a positive what if. Um, and this child wrote, what if my kitty lives a long time? And then they illustrate the positive one. And I said, don't you dare illustrate that negative what if. We just can't do that. We're going to focus on the positive. So um, she illustrated, look at her cat. He's going to live a long time. Um, what if I lose a tennis game and I get laughed at? And that's a real concern, right? Kids um, concerned about letting people down or looking foolish. So we had to turn, we had to mark that out and turn it into a positive what if, which is what if I win and get a medal? And there she is with a medal around her neck and her arms up. So we practice that um, power of positive thinking, right? And managing stress. Here's another great book under um, self-management that, um, that self-management is one of the SEL competencies. And this is um, self-awareness, accurate perception of self and self-confidence, as well as goal setting. So this book, many of you may know, Giraffes Can't Dance. It's a real popular one. And it's about a giraffe who can't dance, as the title implies, um, but then he can. So in the end, he's a great dancer. So it teaches children, first of all, a lot of things, actually. It teaches um, goal setting and realizing I have some weaknesses, but I can improve on them. But also in the beginning, the animals aren't very kind to him. So we're also hitting that social and emotional domain of um, relationship skills. Because if you take a look, these animals were not very nice because Gerald the giraffe could not dance very well. Everybody else was dancing. And this book, I mean, it really has a lot going for it because take a look, they're all laughing at him. So we talk about empathy, which is also under the social awareness domain of social and emotional learning. And also we talk about um, having confidence to overcome that. And then, hey, sometimes things are hard for us. We all have different strengths and gifts. God did not make us all the same with the same gifts or able to do things at the same time. So Gerald the Giraffe learns that and hopefully we learn that too. Here's another book that would fall under the self-management domain or in the stress manage and the subdomain of stress management. Um, and this is Penelope Perfect. Um, if your school is like ours, we have a lot of perfectionistic kids and perhaps parents. Um, so Penelope Perfect, Penelope learned in the end that she was really just stressing herself out a lot. So we go back to that, whoa, this girl was really perfect. And then one day she wasn't, and she became totally at peace with that. So we talk about how God didn't make us to be perfect. God made us um, to be just imperfect people who are trying our best. And as we go through some of these other resources I have, I think you'll see that's kind of a theme. Um, that helps kids deal with their anxieties. Now, a big domain in um, self-awareness is self-confidence and accurate self-perception. So I'd like to share some of my favorite books about that. I like this one so much. Um, we hit a lot of our Catholic and Christian themes with this book, I like myself. Who made you? And that was the old cat in Baltimore Catechism first question, right? Who made me? God made me. Why did God make me? And it went on from there. So I like myself. Simple book. I've used it with preschoolers. I've used it with eighth graders. A uh, very simple, simple book, but really complex when you think about it. This gets at that we're all made in the image of God. When we tear ourselves down, when we say bad things about ourselves, we're really insulting um, one of God, well, God's greatest creation, which is ourselves and those among us. If you're not familiar with this book, you probably need to get it right away because the illustrations are great. The kids are totally captivated and they're learning self-acceptance, self-confidence, and to love that little person that God made. Another big um, theme under self-awareness, that, that competency is understanding emotions, identifying emotions. Simple book here, The Way I Feel. This girl goes through all the emotions from happy to angry. The illustrations are going to be very captivating. And you know what we learned in this? We learned that God made us as emotional beings. 
It's okay to be mad. It's okay to be sad. It's okay to be jealous. We're going to have all these feelings. You can go through the Bible and different, different stories and think, man, you know, who didn't get frustrated? Look at that. Jesus got frustrated with his disciples because they were sometimes a little ooh, difficult, right? Um, angry. When the Bible got angry, our saints got angry. It's an emotion. How do we deal with it? There are ways we deal with it health, in a healthy way, and there are unhealthy ways to deal with anger. So this is just an overview that, hey, man, we all feel all these feelings probably every day. How do we deal with them? Easy peasy book that the kids love. Oh, and, oh if you haven't seen this one, I think you'll enjoy it. Wilma Jean, the worry machine. Look at her. She's like a little machine. She's a big worrier. Um, this is under self-management, the domain of self-management. It is stress management. Wilma Jean, um, she needs to learn that Bible verse also. We cover in this one. Um, Cast all your cares upon him. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. So we talk about peace and that peace comes from God. We can pray when we're stressed out. We can accomplish nothing by worry, but we can accomplish a lot by giving our worries over to God. Oh my. Okay, I love this book. Peanut butter and cupcake. Kindergartners go crazy for this book. They think it's absolute riot, and I do too, really. And in it, we're covering the domain of self-awareness um, and specifically self-confidence because peanut butter here is looking for a friend. And it takes, we read this book at the beginning of the year because it takes some self-confidence to ask people to play. And a spoiler alert here, um, peanut butter does not easily find someone to play with. Um, Cupcake didn't wanna play with him. Yeg didn't want to play with him. Seemed like nobody wanted to play with him. So he had meatball, didn't want to play with him. So in the end, he finds Jelly, of course, and Jelly plays with him and they're great friends. But throughout, he really needed some self-confidence to find that friend. Also, we talk a lot about empathy, which falls under the social awareness domain. And wow, Nobody was very kind to peanut butter throughout the book. They didn't really have empathy. And we talk about what does empathy mean? Um, they didn't understand how he felt. How does it feel when somebody doesn't want to be your friend? So we talk about loving your neighbor as yourself. You wouldn't want people to tell you that you don't want to play with them. So you know, especially in those early weeks of school, we're all looking for friends. And God wants us to be welcoming to each other. We treat others the way we want to be treated. All wrapped up in this cute little book. Oh my goodness. Okay. This is my very favorite book. I've even lent it to adult friends. It's called The Awfulizer. And um, as far as the domains of social and emotional learning go, this one relates to um, emotion, self-awareness, identifying emotions. And that emotion in this book that is dealt with is shame. Okay. I love to do this book right around when our second graders are having their first reconciliation because it's kind of a big event for the school. You know, everybody knows they're having their first reconciliation. And we talk about how God forgives us. God forgives us as soon as we ask for forgiveness. We don't have to go around feeling shame for what we've done when we've already been forgiven for it. And the kids know, even little ones, when I say, who is, the, who is it most hard to forgive? And they always say themselves. Isn't that something? I didn't know they had that kind of insight, but they do. And they really relate to this book. The awfulizer is a monster, there he is, who makes you feel ashamed of everything you've done. So this little boy, the main character, goes through rehashing, reliving everything he did wrong. And the awfulizer grows. He takes away his self-esteem. He takes away his confidence. And he just makes him ashamed of himself. And it's amazing how kids relate to this. And again, we just take it right back to that first reconciliation that's going on in our building and say, wow, if God forgives us, we're required to forgive ourselves. Um, and I have a Bible verse for that. It's from 1 John. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. So sometimes kids need to be reminded of that, and adults too. Um, you've been forgiven, and there's a reason to keep beating yourself up. Love that book. Oh, I love this book too. This is for... Um, 
I don't know. I was going to say it's for little children, like kindergarten, first grade. But you know what? Our kids lose so much self-esteem as they go through adolescence. I may use it with middle school as well. It's called I Don't Want to Be a Frog. Um, he wants to be everything but a frog. So we hit on the concept of Imago Dei, uh, made in the image of God. You're made in the image of God. A lot of times we'll want to say, oh, I wish I could look like that, or I wish I could do what she does. Or um, Our kids are very competitive sports-wise, so they feel really down on themselves if somebody's more athletic in their class and they can't keep up at recess, or they don't feel like they're as good at um, physical things. So we talk about how God made us with all our unique gifts, and there's some there are special things about us, and there are special things about other people. And thank goodness we're not all the same. And thank goodness that frog is frog, and you are you. Kind of goes with this book right here. Same theme. This is Leo the late bloomer. Most educators know Leo. Leo took longer to do everything. This book, um, I use the the domain is self-awareness and specifically self-confidence. A lot of your children who are a little behind others, um, whether it's in reading or in even speaking or in math or physically, um, it's like, this one's for you guys. And I, we just hit on the fact that we're all behind or not behind, I don't say that. We're all slower to learn certain things than others. And I tell the students just examples from my own life. I say, well, you know, I did not learn to swim until I was nine years old. And they're like, oh, these first graders. I don't know how to swim since I was four. How could you take so long? I said, well, my goodness, some things are harder for us. Some of us read later. Some of us have a hard time with math. And then we get it later on. Some of us um, don't learn to ride a bike right away. So we draw a picture. We take a piece of paper on one side. We draw how we're struggling with something now. And on the other side, we draw what it will look like when we accomplish that because we're all late bloomers in something. They like that. They get that. Um, what is it? Some they've written about or they've drawn about um, trying to, everything from trying to turn a cartwheel to learn to read, to ride a bike, to swim. Tying their shoes, tying their shoes. They're very worked up about when they learn to tie their shoes and think they're late bloomers. Okay, this is a little bit like the um, I Don't Want to Be a Frog book. And again, it gets to that concept of God made each of us special. Like this little dragon, he's too cute. I have to show you. It's called Not Your Typical Dragon. Um, so he was not a fire-breathing dragon. And it was really wearing on his self-esteem. And there was a lot of pressure in his family to be a fire-breathing dragon. He was not. He breathed like funny things like whipped cream. He breathed Band-Aids. It was like whatever the situation called for is what he was breathing. He's breathing out marshmallows. And it's just such a delightful way to cover that concept. Well, to get back to the castle competencies, it's again, self-confidence, which is one of the competencies and recognizing our own strengths. And so in this book, we don't talk about what's hard for us. We talk about all our many gifts what's easy for us, what comes naturally to us. Because again, Imago Dei, we are all made in the image and likeness of God and we all have different strengths. This guy felt like he was a weirdo because he didn't do what everybody else did. But he was given special strengths too. Oh, getting back to self-awareness, identifying emotions. How cute is that? Peanut butter and jelly -ous. A lot of times we make the mistake, I feel a mistake, of telling children that oh, you're just you're just jealous of that child. That's not nice to be jealous. That's a bad thing. We're all jealous. I'm jealous. You're jealous. We're all jealous. So peanut butter and jelly is sometimes friendships get sticky. And we just talk about jealousy is just another emotion. So what do we do when we're jealous? I don't know. The Bible says we love our neighbor as ourselves. So if my neighbor gets a new bike, I got to be happy for him. I want someone to be happy for me. Um, if our best friend always wins the race, it's hard. We're going to feel a little jealous on the inside. We can't be acting jealous. We have to say, hey, man, I'm happy for you. And guess what? The more you say that, the more you actually do get happy for them. Because you know what? God has blessed you in other ways and at other times. So cute book, just a lot. Ooh, another one under the self-awareness category, this book, when Izzy was, when Lizzie, sorry, was afraid of trying new things. Um, it's a, under the self-awareness domain. It covers self-confidence, having an accurate self-perception and identifying emotions. And then emotion here is anxiety or fear or worry. So Lizzie, um, she's really afraid to 
to do really anything new. And her family recognizes it. So really this little simple book also covers um, the sub, the domain, the castle SEL domain of relationship skills and relationship building because her family really helps her overcome and lose that fear of trying new things. So we talk about things that we've been afraid to try and why are we afraid to try them? And did God put certain opportunities in our lives for us to take part in and learn and grow from? A lot of your anxious kids really relate to this book because if their parents are like, hey, you know what? You should try out for the basketball teams. Mm -mm, no, I'm, and it's really a fear-based response. So our kids, um, we talk a lot about self-confidence and trying new things and hey, who's not gonna fail once in a while? That's no big deal. Oh, this book, so simple. It's under social awareness domain. It teaches appreciation of diversity. Well, the colors of us, the pictures are great. And again, reminds the kids of all ages that we are all made in the image of God. Now I start with um, kindergarten and first grade on this mostly. And the first thing, our population is not very diverse, but I have them hold their little hands up to each other and ask, is anybody the exact same color as anybody else? And they're not. They are, um, and they're amazed by it. Like, well, I'm more peach. You're more tan. You have freckles. You're more pink. And this beautiful book, it's actually by Karen Katz. If you have little kids, she's the one who made all those um, lift the flat board books. So they look at all the different colors of skin. And again, we just go into how God made us that way. Wow, God gave some of us golden skin, some of us brown skin, some of us tan skin. And in the end, the little girl draws everybody. And what we do as an activity, the children all trace their hands so that their page looks kind of like that. And they have to draw all the hands as different skin shades. Crayola makes boxes of um, skin colors, crayons, and we use those. And we also um, mix colors. And we just remind ourselves that, wow, look at God's beautiful creation. Again, easy, fun, and really meaningful. Oh boy, you talk about a book. This is a book, A Boy and a Jaguar. This is an autobiographical picture book. It's written by Alan Rabinowitz. So this book works on our subdomain of social awareness, which is um, empathy and appreciating diversity and respect for others. Um, because this boy was a little different. He had a problem that a lot of kids have. So some kids relate to this in that he could not speak um, fluently. He was an extreme stutterer. The only wet time he spoke fluently was when he spoke to animals. Oops, there we go. So he's speaking to the animal, the jaguar in the zoo. And it's, this is a fabulous picture. Right? So as he's speaking to the uh, jaguar in the zoo, he can speak fluently. In every other situation, he stutters, even when just speaking to his own parents. So here's a picture of him in the classroom. And it's a really sad image. He's so downtrodden. Um, we talk about empathy, which is under social awareness domain as well. How do we think he felt when they were, you know, looking down on him because he had a little bit of a speech problem and kids get it. I mean, first grade, they, they know he's embarrassed. He's sad, he might be angry, he might be frustrated and they come up with all these things, which again, gets to another social emotional domain of identifying emotions, which is under self-awareness. So again, all these books were covering these domains um, in spades. And we're also talking about, well, who made this boy? Well, God made him. Did God make any mistakes? No, he sure didn't. And guess what? In the end, this boy, becomes the biggest advocate for jaguars. And he, Alan Rabinowitz, has done more for the protection of big cats than anybody else in the world. It's just a very inspiring story. And kids who struggle with things like this early on, they find it you know, so empowering to think that someone who couldn't speak really spoke up for those animals who couldn't speak. It's a great book. 
Um, so appreciating diversity, um, having empathy, and again, realizing that we all have various gifts. Even if you don't have anything to do with teaching kids, that's a book to read. This one's fascinating and it's along the same lines. It's social awareness domain. Um, it show, teaches empathy and appreciation of diversity and respect for others. The Girl Who Thought in Pictures. It's a biographical picture book, the story of Dr. Temple Grandin. You may be familiar with her. She's um, sort of a, one of the most famous spaces of autism. And so kids realize this girl was saying kind of an outcast. And what did that feel like? Were people nice to her? How did she feel? And sometimes she felt overwhelmed. She felt unliked. She felt frustrated. But in the end, she did great things in the world of agriculture. Again, very encouraging. God did not make a mistake when this girl had these challenges. She overcame and she made the world a better place. And when we overcome, we always make the world a better place. Ooh. Older children like um, middle grades, third grade, fourth grade. I usually use this with fourth grade. It's called Say Something. And it again addresses the um, domain of self-awareness specifically self-confidence. And that is the confidence to say something when evil is happening around you, when unkindness is around you. To res show respect for others, have empathy. Again, we hit empathy here, again, under the domain of social awareness. And I love this book because ooh, here's some activities we do with it. Um, I love this book because in the end, we talk about how she never, throughout the book, she never hurt anybody. She didn't go out to hurt anybody, but she saw people around her being hurt. She didn't say anything. And then of course, you know, at the end, she's the one who is being hurt and nobody says anything to speak up for her. That's why it's called Say Something. And then we get to the Confidior Prayer from Mass what I have done and what I have failed to do. And I say, how does that prayer relate to this book? And we're asking God for forgiveness for what we have done, sins of commission, and what I have failed to do, sins of omission. And they get it right away. Okay, this girl was a sin of omission. She didn't help others when she could have. And then, but she learned, hey, I need people to speak up for me. So I will speak up for others. Love that book. Simple, short, and powerful. Now, this one's actually hard to read without crying if you're not familiar with each kindness. It is not a happy ending. No spoiler alert, but you should know. It's not a Disney ending here. Um, there's a lot of cruelty in this little picture book. Um, social ostracism. We talk about how does that girl feel when nobody will play with her and the main character will not talk to her. She ignores her day after day. Um, the little girl is, it's made clear that she's really an outcast. She's different. She is um, gone one day. So she's in their school. Nobody's kind to her, including the narrator, including the first person narrator. Um, and she's bothered by that. And she's like, I wish that girl would come back. She'll come back and I'll do something nice for her. I'll be kind to her. Her conscience started to bother her. She wasn't kind. Unfortunately, the little girl doesn't come back. So we talk about that, that we don't always have a second chance to show kindness and empathy, a hard lesson to learn. And kids don't like it. Um, I mean, they like the book, but they don't like that ending. And I remember I had a little boy who's in third grade and he said, that's messed up. He was waiting for me to, he's like, there's more, turn the page. And I said, there's no more. She doesn't come back. She doesn't have this character here. She doesn't have a chance to be kind, but that's how life is. We have to be kind today. We have to treat others as we want to be treated today. Um, it's a tough one. Um, and again, we go back to the confidior, what I have done and what I have failed to do. She failed to show any kindness while she had the chance. It hits the, um, the social emotional learning competency of social awareness, which is appreciating diversity. This little girl was different in the class and examining prejudices and biases. It's that in spades, you all. Oh, okay, no, this is a preschool book right here. Preschool and kindergarten, it's okay to be different. Uh, appreciating diversity, um, 
simple. If you're not familiar with Todd Carr, the drawings, the kids adore. Like, I mean, it's silly. It's okay to eat macaroni and cheese in the bathtub, baby. That's all right. And it's just, again, who made you? God made you. Who made that guy next to you? God made him. He's going to be different than you, right? Um, we look at all the different, you know, somebody may be a different color than you. They may have a different hairdo than you. And God made them all. I don't know if you remember Mercer Mayer. Mercer Mayer is a huge author um, with the Little Critter series. I love these little critter books. Again, hitting diversity, empathy, and relationship building. And remembering, again, Imago Day, we're all made in the image and likeness of God. This little critter here, he is half rabbit and half turtle. I thought, well, that's pretty different. He didn't look like anybody else in the gang in the book. Um, but little critter, little critter has no regrets because he does befriend this different little guy. And um, he he has no problem with the diversity he sees, with the differences he sees in this little guy. So again, we're hitting that domain of social awareness and relationship building. And, you know, little critter, he had another um, competency here of self-confidence. He had to be confident enough in himself to say, oh, I'm going to be friends with him. And sometimes we have to do that. Mm -hmm. We're judged for how we treat each other. Ooh. I don't know of a place that doesn't have clicks. This again hits um, social awareness, diversity, respect for others. And I mean, it's, it's a cute little plan where it's kids like it. Clicks just don't make sense. Julia Cook is a big social and emotional learning writer. I have no trouble using her books and relating it to our Catholic teachings and our biblical principles. So this is, <laughs> Penny is left out. She's different than the other coins. She's brown, she's not silver, she has low self-esteem. So we're hitting everything in here. Um, we're hitting how to be a good friend, how to lift somebody up, um, and appreciating diversity and having self-confidence. Julia Cook books usually teach a whole lot. Are you gonna see an old book? This is an old book, That's Mine, Elizabeth Winthrop. And I think this is perhaps my kindergartner's favorite lesson. We read this book and it teaches, let's see, the domain, the social learning, social emotional learning competency of relationship skills, teamwork and communication. Because the little boy and girl in this book, it's the simplest illustrations. You're building a castle and they get really mad, have a big fight and they ruin what they've made. In the end, they work together and they build it back even better. The kids are always convinced that the baby's gonna tear up the castle, but he doesn't. Um, and they build a castle better than ever. So again, it hits teamwork and communication, which is under the relationship skills competency. Also social awareness, which is respect, which includes respect for others and perspective taking. So they see what the conflict was about, each one wanted their own way. And then we get to the, I mean, there's a lot of competencies in this little book. Responsible decision-making, because they had, it falls under that, which one of the subdomains is solving problems and being kind and compassionate. Well, I got the Bible first. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other. And in the end, they totally did. They worked it out. They learned how to treat each other. And here's the activity that they go bananas for. I have um, just a Word document and I have a bunch of squares and triangles on it. So, wow. So you and your partner that I'll assign, you're not going to pick your own, I'll assign your partner and you're going to build something. I don't know what you're going to build. You're going to cut out these shapes. Somebody's going to cut them out. Somebody's going to color them. Somebody's going to glue them on this big construction paper and you'll figure out what you're building. You'll have to do that with communicating and working together. Wow. And we talk about what should it not sound like. I want to do this. I'm going to color it. You cut it out. No, you glue. I don't want to glue. Mm -mm. And they model for me. How are we going to work together? Well, I might say, would you mind if I color the pieces and you cut them out? And maybe we'll both glue them. And they're really good at this. They know exactly what. And I said, oh, you're big kindergartners. So we know how to communicate like big kids now and take turns. Oh, and we talk nicely to each other. We don't want to be like the kids in this book when they tore this stuff, ruined their own castle. We adore that. And some of them make rocket ships out of their little shapes. 
Some of them make um, castles, some of them make roads, some of them make bridges, and they do it cooperatively. It's a great lesson. Another favorite book of mine, um, Ordinary Mary's Extraordinary Deed. So it's kind of a math book if you're a math lover. You can use it in math class if you want to. So little Mary does a good deed. And then each person that she does a good deed to does a good deed for five more people. So in the end, look at little Mary there. She's just ordinary Mary. But we're all just ordinary people. And we can do great things because guess what? The math shows us that her one good deed ended up going around the whole entire world. So she got to like 7 billion people because her good deed just kept going. So, wow, look at that. She was um, under the, the competency of relationship skills, social engagement. She was out there doing her good deed and it touched the world. And we talk about how the simple things we do, we don't know where that ends. And sometimes God puts us in situations to do a simple good deed. Do we take that opportunity? Do we love our neighbor enough to do some simple good deeds for them? Oh, this is a really important one. This book is called Sorry by Trudy Ludwig. I love this, using this book um, around the time that the kids have their first reconciliation also. So, with the first and second graders in particular, and third graders, first and second graders for sure, I use sorry, and we go through, well, you know what? When you go to your first reconciliation, your teacher is teaching you, you're not just gonna run in there and just you know, say, hey, father, I got some things to talk about. Here's a way you do it, right? You'll come in, you'll bless yourself, you'll say, bless me, father, for I have sinned. This is my first reconciliation. Then you'll list your sins and they know the steps, right? The teacher's gone over this. So I do this like right before or right after their first reconciliation and tell the first graders about it. This is how, you, this is how it's going to be done. And we say, well, that's really important. There's a way to go through your first reconciliation and you know how to do it. Well, in this book, I say, we're going to learn that there's a way to apologize to a friend, just like there's a way when you go to reconciliation, that you tell God you're sorry for your sins. And this character right here, he did not know that. He did not know what a good apology was. So in the end, we make little bookmarks that show us the right way to apologize to a friend or to a family member. And I teach them, you look them in the eye, you say, I'm sorry for, and you say what you've done. And then they have a chance to talk. They may want to tell you how it hurt them. Okay. And then you have to promise you won't do that again. So kids really get that, that there's a way to make an apology. And believe me, as a counselor, I draw on that for years after. And they'll say, well, I did this to so-and-so. I say, well, how did you apologize? Did they really think you meant it? We talked about that in second grade. So um, this hits the um, social, emotional learning competencies of empathy. because we, we should feel for the person that we've hurt. And responsible decision-making. Sometimes we have to make that responsible decision to apologize and to do it well and solving problems and reflecting on how we've treated others. Really good book. Um, recommend that one a lot. Now you would not believe how many social emotional learning competencies are in this seemingly silly book. Roses are pink, your feet really stink. I read this every year with first grade around Valentine's Day. And here's all it hits, let me tell you. It hits responsible decision-making, because this guy made some very irresponsible decisions. Um, Self-management, relationship skills, such as impulse control, respect for others and problem solving, reflecting on our behavior and relationship building. And I promise you, it's all in here. He had had his feelings hurt. So what do we do when we have our feelings hurt? Do we do something mean? <gasps> Gilbert did. I mean, Gilbert did. Little guy's name is Gilbert and he had his feelings hurt. So he made two mean Valentines to get back at those people. Can we talk about that. That was not responsible decision-making. That was not reflecting. That was not solving problems. That was not showing respect for others. And he messes up big time. He ruins Valentine's Day for part of the day. But then guess what? Redemption. He says he's sorry. He makes it up to them. He makes them nice, a nicer Valentine in the end. The day is saved and we learn, you know what? We all mess up. 
We all hurt people's feelings and we all need to be humble enough to say we did. And then he was forgiven. It's a little redemption story, all wrapped up in a cute little Valentine holiday book. Uh, we look at Ephesians 4.32, be kind to one another and forgiving to one another. And they were. When they heard that they, he had, they had hurt his feelings, he explained himself. And he said he was sorry for hurting their feelings. There was great forgiveness right there in the classroom. And I love it. It's just the most charming little book. Teaching biblical principles. Ooh, just kidding. This is when teasing gets mean. And as we all know, it does. So this book hits um, social awareness, empathy, and respect for others. Responsible decision-making and evaluating and reflecting on our behavior. Be kind to one another. Building each other up is the Bible verse we use in this. Um, so the one guy was tearing the other down. In the end, it's an interesting decision that has to be made in the end. And it's, um, again, reflecting, uh, reflecting on situations and problem solving. And sometimes we have to distance ourselves from people who tear us down. It's a hard lesson to learn. But I feel like sometimes that's, that's an important lesson. Um, I use this usually with fourth graders. Um, now he hangs out with guys who don't put him down. And, you know, he says he's open to being friends with the guy who used to make fun of him and tease him and say mean things to him. But he knows that it doesn't make him feel good to be around him. But so he's he's found other friends for now. That's an important lesson to learn. Also, if you're someone who um, says mean things to people, you know, people may see their way out of that relationship. So we hit a lot of good discussions with that book. Oh, goodness, we'll end on the simplest of all. There's a saying it bears for everything. Um, this one hits responsible decision making um, under relationship skill or re the, the competency of responsible decision making. They tried to solve a problem by lying. And um, teachers, parents, counselors, we all know that and when their back's up against the wall, most kids will try and get out of trouble by telling a fib. So we talk about how that leads um, one leads to more, that leads to more trouble. And um, the eighth commandment to not bear false witness. So they made, they tried to make their own rule. Say, well, I'm just going to make up a story to get out of this. So that's a great one. A couple of resources I'd like to share with you in case um, you're not aware. I have been so blessed by our public school district. So when I'm looking at um, teaching, for instance, about um, mental health issues with the middle school, there's human relations media has very expensive DVDs and resources for teaching about um, anxiety, depression, eating disorders, and our public school pays for those because again, these are, you know, these public school kids are part of the tax paying populace. And so they, they get those resources for us. And, you know, the same thing, I do the same thing with those resources for the big kids. I just share, you know, well, you know, God made your body and he made it just the way that it is. And we appreciate it. And we glorify him through our works and we keep it healthy. Um, so on and on, but just, I try and take that, those Catholics teaching into those um, secular resources as well. Um, our public school district, district also paid for a second step. Um, and the lessons, again, they hit all these competencies we're talking about, self-awareness, social awareness, relationship skills. And I just keep going through those through with a Catholic lens, you know, just loving your neighbor and loving yourself. I have a couple of things I'd like to share, screen share with you. It has, uh, I'm going to share with you some pictures of things we've done around the school. This is one of my favorite, oops, let me share it in a better way. It'll look a little better this way. Okay, so every year I do a hobby day where we have people come in um, and teach things like anything from karate, dance, gymnastics, cake decorating. I think this was Home Depot came out and they, they made a woodcraft. Um, we have someone who brings out small animals. And the point of that is, again, we're hitting some of these social and emotional learning domains, such as self-awareness. We learn to recognize our strengths 
then maybe some of you are really talented in working with animals and you'd love to go learn more about that. Um, and some of you, you know, you're very artistic and, you, and they may want to learn cake decorating and developing self-confidence. Um, some of our kids, um, we've discovered, again, if they're not um, in the athletic crowds, sometimes it's in these elementary years, they feel like they're less than. So our hobby day really gives everybody a chance to find all the various things that they might excel in that you don't maybe encounter in a various in a regular school day. Some of our kids who struggle academically really enjoy this day because, you know, hey, they got to try out karate and they weren't bad at it. Or they did, um, we did we've done we've done all kinds of things in our hobby day and they find out, hey, maybe I do have gifts that I haven't even identified yet. And again, we emphasize God made us all with various gifts. Um, and oh, yeah, I also cover um, the domain of self-management with this because hobbies, the researchers tell us, um, hobbies that you enjoy is um, helpful in stress management. So if you struggle throughout the school day and you go home and you know you do origami, that's another popular one we have, we, um, you know, you feel good about yourself. It raises your confidence and you feel a little less stressed. You're doing something that you're good at. So how I set that up is we do an hour and a half and kids choose three activities they'd like to, they'd like to try out. So they may go from cake decorating to origami to ballet and just try, try those three things out for half an hour each. We get a lot of volunteers in the building to do that. And that is something I really recommend. I have this little girl here. She's a wonderful speaker and very confident. And she was showing students, this is just something you could do in any building. She had um, these hearing aids enabled her to hear. Otherwise she's completely deaf. And you can see how intrigued the children were. She told them all about it. Um, how they work, and they learned, you know, with just enjoying this big girl coming and talking to their first grade classroom, um, they learned that from this fifth grade girl, respect for others, appreciating diversity, and again, we're all made in God's image, Imago Dei. Oh, here's just an example of a display in the hallway. So if we talk about a topic like stress, I always try to include a good Bible verse for it. Um, just thoughts that kids had they, when they, we learn about stress, which um, stress management is under our domain of uh, self-management. There's just a bulletin board display. And even your service activities, um, you think you're teaching social and emotional learning there. You're teaching the domain of relationship skills, social engagement. And then, of course, our Bible verse is what you've done for the least of these, love your neighbor as yourself. We sent this to a Ukrainian church in our town. Um, children made hundreds of cards to show our support. And I should have included here, in addition to relationship skills, I should have included self-awareness because um, that includes self-confidence. And the children learn, and we talk about as we do this, when you do good for someone else, you feel good about you. So it's a self-confidence building activity as well as um, filling, fulfilling that command of Jesus is to love our neighbor as ourselves. And these guys are doing the same, making sandwiches for our um, Catholic Action Center in downtown Lexington. Um, again, making themselves feel better by doing something for someone else and fulfilling the command to love their neighbor. I hope you got a few tips and tricks or ideas or books, resources you want to investigate. And I hope also that you kind of think differently about how you are um, perhaps addressing some of these social and emotional learning competencies just in your religion teaching and in your classroom discussions. I hope it was helpful. A uh, friend of mine said, if you get one idea from a PD, it's kind of like a cookbook. If you get one recipe out of cookbook, you feel like it was worthwhile. So I hope it was worth your while. And I am looking forward to learning from everybody else out there at the conference. So thank you for attending.